Hello again. I want to go through some of the ideas that we had reviewed or actually learned last fall um, in late October, November, and December with respect to black body and electronic emission. So there was this rule or this law that we called the Stefan Boltzmann law. And that states that the luminosity of a star, the total energy output across all EM radiation is proportional to, again, that's not alpha, um, it's not a fish, that's the sign proportional to, just uh, telling us how one quantity will scale with another quantity. So the luminosity of any black body emitter is proportional to its surface area, which is itself proportional to the square of its radius, and then proportional to temperature to the fourth. So what this is saying is that if I double the size of a particular star, a black body emitter, then I'm not gonna double its luminosity. If I double this R, then what happens is you have to square it to figure out what's gonna happen to the luminosity. So if R gets doubled, then the luminosity will increase by a factor of four. If we increase temperature by a factor of two, we're not increasing the luminosity by just a factor of two, we're increasing it by two to the fourth. So two to the fourth, is 16. So the energy output of a star that is twice the temperature of another one, but perhaps the same radius, will be 16 times more. So again, this is the Stefan Boltzmann law. Um, and again, it, re it relates the luminosity of a black body emitter, the radius or the surface temperature when you consider the four pi r squared for our surface area and surface temperature, four pi r squared is the surface area and the temperature. So again, this relationship, luminosity is proportional to the radius squared and temperature to the fourth. Um, another concept that we looked at last fall was the bomber series. And those were the lines of hydrogen emission that all ended at energy level two. So if we have, uh, here's a diagram of the bomber series. Remember, if you have an electron that is in hydrogen excited to energy level three and it drops down to energy level two, what that means is that represents a red photon. It's the equivalent energy of that wavelength and frequency of light. If an electron is excited a little bit higher up, going up to energy level four, and it drops back down to energy level two, that corresponds to a cyan teal colored line. That is what we call um, bomber beta. So again, this is H alpha here or bomber alpha. This would be H beta or bomber beta and then so on and so forth. The energy level, whoop, I gotta scoot these up a little higher. I gotta make sure that I'm labeling the proper thing here. Um, energy level five to two would be the bomber gamma, um, not to be confused with gamma as a symbol for a photon, and then energy level six to two would be bomber delta. Now, if we remember the rules for the hydrogen energy levels, and this again only works for hydrogen, um, the energy of a particular energy level in hydrogen was equal to the first energy level divided by n squared. And remember the ground state had that value of minus 13.6 electron volts. And as you climb the energy levels, that's uh, those are some bad lines right there. What happens is they, they get closer and closer and closer. So energy level two is a certain distance away from energy level one. And then energy level three represents less of an energy gap than two to one, so on and so forth. So as an electron gets excited further up to energy level seven to energy level eight, if it's dropping back to two, then what happens is we only inch over just a little bit more um, in terms of energy. And so you just start getting a little bit less energy gain each time. So the whole bomber series, these lines get closer and closer and closer this would be, if you get a little bit past here, that would be ultraviolet. Conversely, this is infrared. So that's what we say when we mean the bomber lines converge towards the ultraviolet end 
of the of the visible spectrum. And so just exciting electrons further up, if they're all going to end down at energy level two, then there is a, a limit. You can't get that high. Um, another terminology that is kind of confusing, um, astronomers, I think, are the only people that use this this terminology, this notation, um, this element in a Roman numeral, which is different from maybe the Roman numeral notation you learn in chemistry. So Ca2. Well, let's say I'm going to start with Ca Roman numeral 1, and then Ca Roman numeral 2, and then Ca Roman numeral 3. So calcium Ca Roman numeral 1 represents neutral calcium. This would be calcium that has all of its electrons, so it is neutral, it's a neutral atom. Calcium with the Roman numeral two represents calcium that lost a single electron. So it is calcium with just an overall plus charge. And then calcium with a Roman numeral three represents calcium that lost two electrons, so it would have a two plus charge. So I know it's kind of annoying, this is, terminology that I think only astronomers use, um, but it's it's been used for over 100 years now, and it's uh, not going to change until somebody comes up with something better and just people start using it without being told to use it. Um, so we can look at hydrogen with a Roman numeral one, which looks like high, uh, is actually neutral hydrogen. Hydrogen with a Roman numeral two is actually just a proton. Because if you take away that single electron, um, you just have a proton. Hydrogen with the Roman numeral three, that can't exist because there aren't, you can't take away more electrons from hydrogen. You can only take away a single electron. So yeah, this is uh, an annoying terminology, but um, I do want you to understand it. Um, spectral types. So what type of star is hotter on the surface, O or F type? Well, there is the O, B, A, F, G, K, and M. So these represent the spectral classes of stars as reordered by Annie Jump Cannon over a hundred years ago um, when she realized, or maybe she did, maybe she didn't realize that it represented a thermal spectrum. Um, there were other reasons why she had rearranged this, and we read about those in the Glass Universe, um, and we'll continue to read a little bit more about that when we return to the Glass Universe. The um, O-type, though, these are hot stars, and these are cool stars, and again, cool surface temperatures, uh, changing the perceived color. Um, so you will look at uh, an applet online that will actually really illustrate for you the connection between spectral type, surface temperature, and uh, perceived color of a star. Now, one thing that we can use for some stars, we can infer some size from a spectral type, um, but when we get to other spectral types, I'm going to answer this question, what type of star is larger, a G or M type star? Um, it really depends. And this is where we will turn to something called the HR diagram to really explain how a G or M type star could take on various different sizes.